Hi, uh, my name is James and I'm an engineer here at Liquid Instruments and today we've got a uh, tech demonstration whereby we're going to be using the lock-in amplifier on MercuryLab to detect the position of a cardboard box uh, using a sonar type sensor. So I'll run you through the setup that we have here first. So we've got MercuryLab. Uh, MercuryLab is generating a 40 kilohertz sine wave which is driving one of these uh, ultrasonic transducers it's in here. So the sound wave propagates out, it will then reflect off the target, propagate back in, and then be coupled into uh, the uh, receiving transducer, which then sends its electrical signal back into the input port of Mercury Lab. So we've got one output and one input. Then we're configuring Mercury Lab in lock-in uh, mode. So once we've opened up the lock-in instrument, we've got the input. Um, we're going to be generating a local oscillator at 40 kilohertz. And then we set a low pass filter with a corner of 100 hertz. That's just to filter out any uh, low frequency noise. We're then wanting to be looking at theta because the, so the, the information as to how far away the target is from the, the, uh, the, the transmitter is encoded in the phase of the waveform relative to the local oscillator on MocuLab. So as we move this box away, the time varying attribute of phase will increase because it takes longer for the sound wave to travel out to the box and then back to the receiver. Um, so that's what we're mapping here. So you can see here in um, the, the plot, as I move the box out, the phase increases and then it will wrap around. And then, so if I keep moving it out, you'll see it just wrapping around like that. But then if I move it in, it'll, it'll go down and keep wrapping like that. So you can actually not only so we can't infer absolute distance from this setup because obviously the ambiguity range is limited by the wavelength of our system. But we can actually measure velocity because velocity is simply the change in the distance, which in this case uh, is the change in the phase. So if we were then to perform a frequency measurement on this, so basically taking a d phi as a function of time, then we'd be able to infer the velocity. So you, you can see that's maybe one, two, three, four. Maybe that's like two cycles per second. So like two uh, full wavelengths, and we know that the, the wavelength that we're sending out is 40 kilohertz, so that's about 7.5 millimeters of movement per second. 